Hey everyone, welcome to this new series about making a shoot 'em up game in Unity. I'm just going to give a real brief introduction to what this is going to be. One of my favorite games growing up was the game 1942, which was an arcade game back in the day. So basically, you, you know, it's a classic shoot 'em up game where you just fly around and uh, blow up as many enemies for points as you possibly can. I'm going to break it into five parts. The first part we're going to do today is making the parallax background that you can see in the screen here and the player controller. Part two is going to be implementing a few programming patterns, the factory pattern and the builder pattern to create enemies of different types that will fly around and we're gonna get into the new Unity spline package. Part three is gonna be all about guns and projectiles. We're gonna use another programming pattern called the strategy pattern to do that. Part four is going to be implementing score, health, fuel, a HUD system, and we'll do a real simple menu for getting it out of the game. And then part five will be probably the boss battle to wrap it all up. Let's get started on the project. I'm just going to quickly set up the basics of folder structure here. Um, what I usually like to do, underscore project, put all my files that I'm about to create under there. So I'm going to make an art folder, scripts folder, and one for prefabs and probably one for settings, I think. And we can add some more later if we need to. Just keep things organized. One thing we're going to need for this video is the new input system. So go up to your package manager, search for input system. If you don't have it installed in your project already, just install it and we'll go from there. Okay, one more thing before we start writing any code or importing assets is let's save our scene. Um, let's make a new folder here for that and I'll call it level one. Before we start making scripts, let's go up to our project settings. Uh, if you need to find that, it's under the edit menu there, project settings. And in the editor section, if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see that you can set a namespace here. I'm going to call mine shmup for shoot 'em up. All right, let's make our first script here for the player controller. I'm just going to do a little cleanup here on this first script because we don't need most of this stuff, just remove it all. Next, what we're going to do is define the other four classes, and I'm just going to do that really quickly and put them all into their own class, and then come back to Unity and refresh so that it imports all those new files. So what we've got is a player controller, a camera controller, our input reader abstraction that'll get all the input from the player input component, and we need a parallax controller. So those four things together will handle everything we need to get moving around in our scene. So let's start with the input reader because that's just the most straightforward and we need it kind of before we can do any player movement. So I'm just going to put a dependency here, require component on our player input. I'm going to import the input system as a, as a dependency. So we're going to cache a reference to that player input. We're going to define our move action, which is an input action. We are going to make a public property called move that'll always be reading out the whatever the player's input is on the uh, vector two. And let's just define both of those uh, variables that we needed, the move action and the player input in our start method. And right now, that's all we need. We're going to come back to this later uh, and add other things like firing your weapon. Now, uh, I'm just going to make a note here because it's easy to forget on the player input component in the Unity editor, it should be set to publish C Sharp events. Okay, now it's time for some planes. Over on opengameart.org, I found this really great set of planes to use for this project, and they're free. There'll be a link in the video description to where to get these. Uh, so as you can see, there's all kinds of types of planes here, and uh, they're all going to be perfect. So all you have to do is just click the download or the zip link here and extract them, and then we're going to import them into the project. So I've just dragged them all into my art folder here. I'm also going to bring in these two images that I've made outside. Uh, the battlefield one is something I made in mid journey and I'm going to give you the prompt here on the screen for that too. If you want to, you can make tiling backgrounds in mid journey now, which is really interesting. So I'm going to highlight both of those. As you can see there, I'm just setting this, them both to be Sprite 2D. Uh, generally, I'll just leave it at 100 pixels. That's what they came in as. And clicking off of them lets me save those changes. We're going to keep our backgrounds under a parent object. I'm just going to call it background. And the background will have our parallax controller on it. 
Now, if we just drag these sprites in that we're going to use in the parallax effect, it'll automatically create a game object that has a sprite renderer on it. All we really need to do here is change it from single to tiled. We can stretch it for as long as we want the battlefield to be. So I'm just going to give it a setting of 100 for now, and that'll make quite a long strip. I think, too, instead of moving the player down to the bottom, we can just move the entire operation up. Could go either way on this one, I guess. Oops. I think what I'll do is set it to a 45, and that'll give just a little bit of space at the beginning, and then the player will just move up from there. And now we can do the exact same thing with the clouds. So again, just set it to tiled, same size, same position. So you can see the clouds have a kind of transparent effect over the battlefield. So now let's drag on our parallax controller and let's write the logic for that. This is actually going to be pretty straightforward. First of all, let's set up an array for our transforms for the background and for the clouds. And potentially you could add more layers to this if you wanted to. So we're also going to need a smoothing value and then a multiplier. I'm just going to add some comments just so it's clear uh, for anyone who's reading the code afterwards. So the smoothing will be just how smooth the parallax effect will be. and the multiplier is how different the speeds will be between the different layers. So the, we want the clouds to move faster than the background. And, you know, potentially you could have another layer that had birds on it or anything you can think of. Let's set up a cache for our camera. And we're always going to want to keep track of the previous position of the camera as it's moving along. Now, essentially, the camera is going to follow our player. But in our player controller, we also need the, the player's movement has to be constrained by where the camera is. We don't want the player flying off the screen. So the, these two controllers are going to be tightly coupled. OK, now we can implement the logic for our parallax. So during the update, we need to iterate over any layers that are in our background array. And we want to just adjust them based on the smoothness and the multiplier. So to do that, we'll just make a simple for loop. This script is pretty straightforward. The parallax is going to be the difference, how far we want to move. So essentially, that's how far the camera has moved in one frame, uh, increased by our multiplier. Then we want to know where do we want our target Y for the background of that particular background layer to be. Finally, we just want to lerp the position so it smoothly interpolates between where the background used to be and where it will be this frame. Still nothing to see yet, but we can put our backgrounds into the array and make sure everything's set the way we want. I'm just going to fix this one little error or warning message. If we change the media type to full rec there, that error will go away. Not strictly required. Okay, let's round out the camera controller and then we can do some testing. So we're going to need a reference to the player, which right now is just an empty game object. We also want to define how fast we want the camera to move up the map. Let's start with two. That might be too fast. And uh, Copilot's got the right idea here. We want to set the initial position to be where the player is, but keep our X position so the camera is a certain distance away. Then let's update the movement in late update. So the camera will be the last thing to move. We're just going to move it up according to the speed with time dot delta time. OK, we just need a few settings here on the camera. I dragged in the player into the camera controller script. And 
let's set it to orthographic and then I'm just going to play with the size in the game view here to fit it to his kind of full screen. That looks okay. Okay, trying it out. That's pretty fast. Probably too fast. It's obviously working though. Let's just, uh, I'm just going to drag that component up to the top and change the speed to one. Yeah, that looks okay. Okay. Now I'm going to pick a ship here. I'm going to change all of those sprites to be Sprite 2D. And now, a handy trick if you want to animate sprites. It, basically, this sprite, for, and the sprite for all the planes, is just the propeller spinning. So what you can do is you can just grab, select all the sprites, drag them into your hierarchy, and it will make an animation for you there. So I just called my animation player, and I renamed that game object to model and dragged it under my player game object. I'm just going to change the size because it came in there quite large. Uh, we've got a little bit of flickering. That's because the sort order is the same between the background layers and the plane. So let's change that. I'll just put the player at 100. I think that's good. Okay, we'll save everything and it's time to make the player controller, which is the last part of this. So let's go over to our player game object. We've already added our player input from earlier. Let's add our input reader. Let's also add our player controller script. And let's start writing it. We need to define a speed. Say five is probably a good start. Possibly we can rotate the plane a little bit as we're moving side to side. Let's have a reference to the model in case we need it. Let's define some bounds how far to the left and right and up and down in the view do we want the player to be able to move. This will let us be able to set it right in the inspector. I'm just going to put in some default values for now, but it, we're going to have to change them. And if you were to change how close the camera was to the battlefield, for example, you would want to tweak these as well. Next, we're going to need a reference to our input reader. Let's also keep track of a few other things for movement. We're going to need current velocity and target position. Is Target position is going to be where we want to move to every frame. And we're going to do a bit of smoothing in there to make it feel a little bit better to the player. So the crux of this is going to be our update method. Let's In start, let's cache the input reader. But in update, we want to calculate where do we actually want the player to be. Reading from the input and then multiplying by our speed by time dot delta time we can determine where we want to be now we also need to figure out are we within the bounds or not i'm going to rename this variable to something more suitable here let's call it camera follow so using the camera follow transform we can determine where on the screen the actual limits should be for the player and then we can use the mathf.clamp method Copilot already has a good idea here, but not quite. I'll just fix that up. So we want to clamp the X, clamp the Y, and then we're going to use some smoothing to round that out. Uh, let's not have a hard-coded smoothness there. Let's make this into a serialized field. I'm just going to make some room here so this isn't falling off the screen. Uh, let's put this one up with the other, with, up by the speed there. And let's give it an initial value there of something quite small. Let's make two more fields here that will handle our rotation. So we can turn the plane a little bit as we're moving side to side. We don't want to move too much because this is a 2D object and it'll look weird if we uh, you know, were to turn it 45 degrees or something. So we'll keep it pretty small. Just add a little comment here to say what we're about to do. Let's determine the angle we want to turn the plane at. Let's determine the angle we want to rotate the plane at. We'll take the input of our horizontal axis, multiply that by the lean angle. That'll be the angle we want to end up in. Now let's get our current Y rotation. And we're, again, we're going to use a, a lerp. So we can use the lerp angle method 
which will figure out a new rotation based on our speed of how fast we want to lean the plane and time dot delta time. Apply that to the rotation of the transformed local Euler angles. So that just accepts a new vector three where we send in the new Y rotation. And then we'll just clean up that code a little bit. Now my ID is giving me a hint here that this multiplication could be a little bit better. So I'm just going to take that suggestion and put the speed multiplied by time dot delta time in its own set of parentheses. And then we got to come back to the inspector. Let's drag in our camera into the camera follow field and let's give it a play. So I forgot one thing there. Instead of target position equals, it should always be plus equals. We have to update every frame to the existing value that we had. So and I also notice that our plane dropped off the screen right away. So we're gonna, let's just tweak the, the min here to be minus one right away. And then let's try it again. That looks pretty good. We're following along with the camera now and we can't go any lower than this. So the next thing to do is to tweak those values. So can we fly off the screen right now? Probably, so. I think I'm also gonna adjust the speed that five felt kind of too fast. This feels pretty good. Let's see here. Okay, right off the screen. Let's try minus five and five. Still too much. Let's try three. Yeah, that's almost, that's pretty much perfect. Okay. And then we can go too high. Let's change this one. Yeah, it's going to be pretty tight, this one. Let's try two. It's just very close. One point something. One point six. Well, 1.4 looks really good. So that's the whole screen. We might not want to limit it even more than that, but this looks pretty good right now. I'm just going to stop playing. Let's come back over here, set those values in here. Minus 3, 3, minus 1, and 1.4. I think I'll hit play one more time here and just try the different lean angle and see to see how it looks here. You'll see on the screen here, it'll look kind of funny if I change it. So that's gonna be it for this video. That's quite a lot to do already, but that's kind of the bulk of just getting the game working. So in the next video, we're going to start spawning enemies. We're gonna use a few programming patterns to do that and we're going to import the new Unity Splines package so that we can move enemies on a nice smooth path across or up and down on the screen. So hit the subscribe button if you're interested in seeing part two.